I'd like to mention a short message from Father Henry Nouwen, one of the most popular Catholic spiritual writers in the world. Once you take a cup and lift it, you should drink it. The first question a waiter asks when you go to a restaurant is, can I get you something to drink? And the first thing you say to a guest in your home is the same. However, drinking the cup of life means making everything we own to our life. That would be like saying, this is very my life, or this is how I want to live it. Therefore, drinking the cup of life means not only filling it with your own unique sense of being and life, but also you acknowledge and internalize your sorrows and joys as they are. Jesus is predicting his coming question and death, but the disciple can make nothing of his prediction because they are caught up with earthly privilege and greed for power. In particular, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, are very secular. So Jesus asks them if they can drink the cup of the passion and the cup of the blood for the gospel that he must drink. The cup of the passion here refers to persecution, and the cup of the blood for the gospel represents martyrdom. Eventually, St. James became the first apostle to be martyred, and St. John proclaimed the gospel with love to the end, even in the midst of persecution. We record the spiritual teachings of Father Benemplit Panstraden, founder of the Pontifical Charity Aid to the Church in Need. Christianity is being tasted. Persecuted Christians are being tasted in their faith, but we are all being tasted in our love. Let's put our love into action for the church, being suffered by persecution, and that means taking the cup that Jesus drank.